views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program host and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions held by TCN TV Network Incorporated. Due to the social nature of this broadcasting channel, videos may contain content copyrighted by another entity or person. The TCN TV Network claims no rights to the said content. TCN TV Network cannot be held accountable for the copyrighted content. TCN TV Network is a messenger and sharer of information and strives to verify but cannot warrant the accuracy of copyrights or completeness of the information on this program. Access to information is vital. When you create a haystack of human lives, a bucket that collects all of the records of all of your private activities, our current epidemic of misinformation, we're getting these news deserts. Local news is going extinct. And we find this negative relationship between voter turnout and exposure to fake news. The point of modern propaganda isn't only to misinform or push an agenda, it's to exhaust your critical thinking. And that's the way to annihilate truth. When you believe that something's wrong, what do you do? You get the future that you work for and you plan for. You get the future that you fight for. The most important thing that we can do is hopefully arm the consumer. We need to keep studying these markets to really predict the implications for social welfare. If we don't have privacy, we don't have the sanctity of our own mind. I have the faith that we can in fact tackle these problems. We're back. Another week. It's Tuesday. I'm in a much better mood this she week. She is this week. We both are, though. Well, you know. Last week was not a good week. <laughs> but we made it. Yes, we did. Right? Things mm -hmm. happen. And we grow from everything. That's the wonderful thing about this is that um, we've been given a, um, an opportunity and we have a platform and we're going to continue to use it to better the community. And Truth. today, I want to welcome everyone, of course, to Here to Help You. Of course, with my host with the most, the one, the Iranian. Alongside the Danet, my woman in charge, Simone Jennifer Smith. So today we're going to jump right into it. Today we're talking about disinformation and misinformation. Not like this information, but disinformation. This. And I remember when I first said this word to you, you were like, oh, disinformation is not a word. And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> disinformation is a word. Yes, you did. Don't lie. Guys, let me remind you before we go any further, if you have anything you want to say about this, I'm sure we might have some people who have some comments about this, please don't forget to comment in the box below if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can do that. Also, YouTube, we have a running screen so you guys can comment while we're on the show live, live and, direct. and you can get in contact with us and say something. Mm -hmm. um, you can also give us a call if you want to. There's so many ways to get in contact with us. So you guys, the show's for you, community. You guys can have a voice, right? And of course, like, share, and subscribe. Sure things. Okay. Well, so good. let's talk about misinformation. So let's explain that first since you didn't know the difference, Dave. Go to difference. So misinformation is false information that can be spread by accident. That is misinformation. Okay. Okay. It is different from disinformation. Disinformation is mean, it's meant to actually deceive. So misinformation is false information, but it's not, it doesn't have like a, it does not intend to like hurt or do anything or like lie. But the, dis the mis disinformation, the deceiving comes in. 
Okay. So okay. what you're saying is that one's by accident, one's on purpose? Kind of like that. Okay. Right? Um, like, it's like me saying, oh, outside is sunny because I'm sitting in here. And I say it to you. And then I say it to Grant, who's in the studio today. And then I say it to Selena. And we all believe that it's sunny outside because we haven't been outside these doors for a few bit. And then we go outside and it's sunny or it's, it's gloomy. And it's misinf- you guys were misinformed. I didn't mean to do it. Right? I think she did. Anyhow, so <laughs> usually disinformation is political. There's some political, someone's getting these agendas with disinformation. Okay. Always. Okay. So right. people that create disinformation find ways of publishing it, of course, in places that will not be associated with them. They want to distance themselves from the disinformation. Okay. Uh, disinformation and propaganda, very close. Very close friends. They, there's that fine line with them. Because disinformation can become propaganda. Well, you know, there's no clear-cut definition of propaganda. Propaganda could be anything. What is it called? Propaganda. What did you say before that, though? Propaganda. No, you didn't say that. You said, like, opaganda. It did. Okay. So. Ocular. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> so, as you can see, we have angles. They, they're, they're all, they can see all of these full gray beard now. I, I dyed it white. So, propaganda <laughs> is when governments use biased or misleading information to get people to believe in a particular political case or sorry cause or case um but viewers must understand that propaganda is not restricted to government use propaganda is everywhere yeah very right? much so it's used a lot in marketing yeah all the time especially um but uh, the last election in the states we're getting there so one has to remember that with this information and with propaganda, there is always, always, always a larger agenda. And this is what we as viewers, all of us in the social media space, have to be aware of. So what do they want you to believe? Always think that when you're listening to things, what, what do you think people are trying to get out of it? When people tell you things sometimes, especially when it's coming from a media source, you've mm-hmm. always got to think, hmm, yes. what's this about? Very true. So fake news, we've been hearing that that terminology thrown around a lot, right? So the favorite terminology used now is fake news, and it became really popular around what you were talking about the Trump time when, when Trump got brought in. That's when this whole fake news word came up, okay? So there are some similarities between fake news and disinformation. Fake news often gets attention because it confirms the opinions and the world views of those who are reading it, all right? Mm-hmm. So the word itself, actually, I think you'll find this interesting. The word disinformation actually comes from the Russian word disinformatsya. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad, yeah. Sorry to all my Russian speaking family. Disinformatsya. (laughs) Which has, which which its first use was in the Soviet Union in the 1950s. Okay. And the word itself is actually a form of disinformation. Because many believe that Joseph Statlin, or Statlin, Stalin, Stalin, your brethren, mm-hmm. he's the creator of this word. Um, he coined the word to sound French. Mm. That way, he could claim it was like a foreign invention. So he, he dis, distanced himself from his own word. Yeah, smart. That is very smart. Yeah. So it's desinformatia. Not bad. I'm getting good at it. Yeah, but much better. So much of what we read, um, much of what is written usually has a particular bias. So we have to be really aware of our own biases as well when we're reading information. Like, we get a lot of stuff thrown at us and, like, thrown in our direction, right? Very. And if we're not careful, we sometimes are gauged and focused on what we want to hear. If you hate to say this name again, because I usually don't like talking about him, but if you hate Trump, you are going to gravitate to everything that is anti-Trump. <laughs> That's what it is, whether it's true or not. That's just what it is because right. you have your own internal biases. Yeah. And this is what you have to be careful of is the media plays on your biases. They know you're biased. They know you're polarized, mm-hmm. right? So what they do is they will aim at you. They'll trigger it. I swear I feel like sitting there with a gun like, you're gone. You're gone. <laughs> you're biased gone because they know, right? Mm-hmm. So when we get back, we're going to take a look at the characteristics of this information and how we can become experts at picking it up. I'm going to give you guys all that. We're going to be able to pick out this information. I'm looking forward to that because I want to hear exactly, you know, how we can go ahead and sift out from a more practical standpoint. It's going to take some practice, but you can do it, guys. We'll see you soon on Here to Help You. At Benjamin Law, we understand the real cost of personal injuries. 
As the victim of an accident, you may be the one who's physically hurt, but your main concern is that your family are the ones who will pay the price. Benjamin Law will be there for you, helping, supporting, and working tirelessly to resolve your personal injury case. Call 1-855-899-4878 or visit BenjaminLaw.ca and let our family of lawyers help your family. the question, what is the single most important thing that would, that would incentivize you to get connected if you're not already connected? And the answer was digital literacy. And if you look at the FCC's report uh, last week, the 900 person phone or the phone survey that, that they did, price was the first, but the second was digital literacy and I don't see the value. So I, I don't disagree with the fact that price is important, but if you ask anybody, would you rather have something free or pay more for it, they're going to say free. So I'm, I'm not saying that that's not an issue that our community and these communities need to deal with, but I think it's a little bit of a distraction to focus on that just exclusively. If you get to the other two issues, digital literacy and I don't see the value, I think it goes a little bit to what Craig was saying, which is that there's an aspirational disconnect in our community right now. If you talk to people of color about what they want, we want a good education, we want opportunity for our kids, we want to stay connected, we want to be part of our community, and yet they don't see that there's a connection between achieving all of those things that matter to them and being connected and, and being... And that was pretty cool. He, he is so dead on. There is a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was speaking to Selena about this today. Well, before I go into that, let me welcome everybody back to here to help you. Our show today is on disinformation and misinformation. Uh, I think being in the media space, it is our responsibility um, to make sure that we are providing this information for you guys because we need you to be able to critique everything. We are now in the age of digital. Everything is digital. Mm -hmm. And digital media literacy is very different. It's a complete different language from when we used to open up a book and read it, eh? Right. And this is the thing. Um, a lot of us are <laughs> digi digitally illiterate. No, you d some of us don't even know the ABCs of media literacy. Okay. And it's very important that we learn this because just like children, if you try to talk to a child about philosophy, the child looks at you like, Duh, because they don't know. And it's just like how some of our community is right now. We're babies when it comes to, to the media um, literacy like world. Right. So we have to teach you guys how to understand what is happening out there. If not, you're just going to continue getting flooded. You're going to continue to be polarized. And you're probably most likely going to stay exactly where you are in your lives because, again, the gravy train is going and we mm. don't want to catch on. So with this information, it is a challenge to find out where sometimes it originated and just as difficult to prove the creator intended to spread false information. So this is why it is important to learn to think critically and to teach our young ones also how to think critically. But if you don't know how to do it, yeah, you can, how can we teach them? It's going to be incorrect. Right? right? You see, that's why sometimes you'll I'll walk into a house and see everyone, mom, dad, children, iPads, phones like this. I'm just like, do any of you even know what you're taking in right now? Mm -hmm. Right? So the key to spotting this information is to learn how to read this. So let's go through how you do this. So media literacy is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and create media. Being media literate allows you to better understand the complex messages that we receive from television, radio, internet, newspaper, magazines, books, billboards, video games, all of this, because this is all digital, get music and other forms of media. So when learning media literacy, we have to focus on five principles. Are we ready for this, Miss Salina? All right, so... Number one thing is we have to know that all media messages are constructed. It's important to understand the time, effort, multiple drafts, and varying perspectives 
that go behind the final final product that we see in front of us. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. That that takes work. That, that makes sense. So when someone takes this much time to do something like this, this also means there must be a purpose. Okay. No one's going to spend this much time drafting and finalizing and putting things together if they did not want there to be something out of it mm -hmm. for you and I to get. So that's the first thing, is understanding that it is constructed. So when you go know that, we can move on to the rules. Okay. So all media are constructed using their own set of rules. So there's different types of media. So newspapers, for example, will use headlines that will catch your attention, okay? So there's this big topic on clickbait, which actually I speak about in the upcoming edition. Uh, and clickbait is usually when online articles, blogs, or other posts attempt to get a large amount of viewers um, by saying some really outlandish things, okay? Like they'll just put out anything to get you to click. It's all about the click. Every click is money for them. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that media can catch you. Right. Radio stations, right? They play the top 20, top 40. They, they play what is going to catch people to come the to audience. them. And of course, what comes with, with music in radio stations, advertising. Mm -hmm. So all these things work hand in hand. So remember, it's constructed with a purpose and it all has a different medium sometimes, okay? So another thing we have to take into consideration is uh, different people will have different reactions to the exact same media message. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay? Right. Because of each individual's age, upbringing, religion, culture, or education, no two people see the same movie or hear the same song on the radio the same way. It's always going to be different. We all will have our own experiences, biases, mm -hmm. thoughts, put on any piece of information that comes at us, right? True. Asking questions about how different people encounter the media in different ways helps us to think more critically. Because remember, we stay in our heads. Sometimes we have to come out our heads. Right? Mm -hmm. We stay because remember, we have our own stuff. So we stay there. It's good to be around people so you don't have that whole group think happening where you're all thinking the same way because you're all in the same building and you're all working together, right? Yeah. It's good to have different ideas. Yeah, sometimes we just have to learn to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. But it's good for us, good. right? Yeah. Now, the obvious media is typically produced by businesses because they want to earn money. <laughs> That's just reality. Mm -hmm. Guys just holding up the board like, this is plan A, plan B, to get the dollars. That's it, right? And finally, media has embedded values and points of view, naturally. These are things that I think some people do know but don't really take into consideration. So it is important to learn how to read all kinds of media messages in order to discover the point of view that are embedded in them. Mm -hmm. Here are some questions that you can help yourself with by asking when you're either reading media or watching media. So, who created this message and why are they sending it to us? Number one, mm -hmm. okay. What tin techniques are being used to attract my attention? So this is something else that one day would be a good show to do on, Dave, is look to look at the media techniques because different things work for different people but they're always coming at you right. constantly, right? Mm -hmm. What lifestyles, values, and points of view are represented in the message? How are they trying to catch you? What, what's in there that you see that's like, oh my God, that reminds me of, that gets you attracted to that message, right? Hmm. How might different people understand the message differently from me? This one's probably the most difficult because we're all very self-centered people, majority of us. So we're only thinking about how the message means, what it means to us, right? right. This is how that whole Trump nonsense, who hates Trump and who doesn't. That's how these stupid things happen, but right? It's, it's also how um, what people derive as um, derogatory or inflamed messages, how we put pressure on the companies who wouldn't have these images removed. Explain. Can you give us an example? So, for instance, um, there was an image of a white woman who was sitting on a black woman. Right, the woman was supposed to be a chair. Some model. I don't remember exactly who put this I up. I remember this. Right, and how inflamed the actual response was. Right? Well, see, with that, though, the what, Grant? <laughs> Black face pumpkins. There you go. <laughs> no? No, I've So apparently there's Black face pumpkins. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Of course. All the pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> See, but these are the type of things, though, that are happening. And again, polarizing. That's a great example yes. of how the media polarizes, right? Like, oh, boy. What is omitted from the message? What was omitted from that message, from the blackface pumpkin message? Like, first of all, pumpkins are orange. And white. Can we pull it up? Yeah. If we have time, we yeah, can maybe. We don't. Maybe, I don't know. If we, maybe, okay, maybe we'll pull it up next, next, next segment. segment. All right. So yeah. next segment, we're going to pull it up for you guys. If you guys have any questions or any thoughts or if there's any other... Any, anything else that you can add to this conversation, please, again, leave comments in the box below. We, we're looking for this. This, is again, is for you guys. And, again, share this, share this out. Share the information about this information mm -hmm. out to as many people as possible because we need to start somewhere. And media literacy, it's, it's something we, again, we're, we're a tutoring team. We're a teaching team. So we're teaching. We have to teach media literacy, too. It's yes, part of it. So we'll see you guys in our next segment of Here to Help You. See you soon. My name is Trish Curling, and I am an online coach, personal trainer, and yoga teacher, and your new host of Shaping Life, which is all about understanding that we have the ability and the control to take charge of our health and wellness. But we can't do it alone, and I can't wait to sit down with the best in the industry. Please tune in every Friday at 1 p.m. live here on the TCM Network. World-famous spiritual astrologer and psychic, Pandit Sai is born to serve people. He is an expert on palmistry and horoscope. He can handle all problems and give Vedic solutions for business, job, love, marriage, husband and wife problems, children, personal, and many others, including depression. He also performs pujas to clear all sorts of obstacles. Call Pandit Sai and see changes in your life now. 647-766-1419 located at 2895 Derry Road, East Mississauga, Airport Road in Derry. So what is the long-term effect of too much information? The polarization of the electorate? A meaner spiritness? And false information as well, because the, the, all the whole of, fake all news pick thing. One, pick one. It's not just one. That's the flavor of the day. Every day is something else. People have to understand are you using your device or is your device using you? Can you put it down? Can you turn it off? You're talking about literally the places people get All their information, information from. I don't care what, what information. Pick one. Phone, television. You know, it used to be news. Now it's opinions. Oh, glasses. We have three experts on the right, three on the left. Let's discuss. Ooh, light bulbs. We have three experts on the right. That's not news. That's opinions. Well, over and over and over. Cycle, 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 cycle. What is the long-term effect of too much information? If you're sitting there and you're thinking it's the gospel, what I'm saying to people is, to all of us, I'm not knocking the phone. What I'm saying is we have to understand. We have to at least ask ourselves around the world, you here in England, wherever you are, what is it doing to us? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. You know, I have an appreciation for what you just said because, you know what, um, Opinions. <laughs> and not even just that, but what do you say in regards to that being taken as gospel, right? And there are a number of incidents, of course, historical wise, where they've taken place and we've taken as gospel, which really didn't happen. Dive into that, Dave. So, <laughs> so for instance, um, the first battle between uh, the in British, right, and the Zulus, and how the British reported how they were victorious in that first battle, right. when in all honesty, they got their shit kicked out of them. Dave, just swear. Right. Um, not even just that, but of course, you know, like, biblically wise as well, right? Um, the, the Jews being enslaved and, you know, building monuments in Egypt. Right. Right. I disinformation like or misinformation? Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this and miss. Okay. Right. Hand um, in hand. Right. I mean, you go to one book, it says, yes, they were enslaved and they came out of it, you know, so on and so forth, and to this glorious new land. Right? And then, of course, you look at another book and say, which part were they slaves? And what did they build? Mm. Well, that's what I was saying. Like, right. it's this has been happening for a long time. Correct. It's just now with so much social, with so much media, it's just heightened. Everything's just heightened, and yeah. it's worse. It is. Right? It is. You know, and it generates, um, of course, not just the polarization, 
but it's done here. Yeah, that's another, that's a technique they use, by the way, right? fear. Fear is a huge one. That's one of their number ones, I think, is fear. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump into the ABCs. I'm going to take y'all back to elementary school, the ABCs of literacy. Oh, we have pumpkin. Oh, we have black yeah, fierce pumpkin. Let's see this. Oh, okay. Bed and bath. They did the black face pumpkins. Oh boy. Okay. I wonder if they wanted those to look like bats. I don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> I really have nothing to say about this one. You got okay. Let's let's. Hey, what do you guys think about the black face pumpkins? It's, it's up there with Justin Trudeau, right? Yeah. Like, is this up there with Justin Trudeau? Should we just stop eating pumpkins now? I don't know. What are you saying I can't put them on my soup? No, we can yam the pumpkin. You just can't paint them black before you do. Oh, okay. Anyhow, you guys can leave your comments on a serious note. Leave your comments on that. Tell us what you think about black face pumpkins and bath body and beyond, what they were thinking or not thinking. Who knows? So ABCs, let's talk about A. So A is for accuracy. So accuracy in reporting means that the information is correct and generally unbiased. Make sense, Dave? Yes. Okay, so is it correct? Are there biases? Inaccuracies? Of course. You can be accurately biased, can't you? But this is what you have to look out for, mm -hmm. right? And again, remembering not just with these ABCs, but learning all those principles mm -hmm. that we talked about in the last segment. Definitely go check out the last segment to look at the principles of media literacy. Mm -hmm. Then the B in ABC is for balance. So balance is reporting um, and checking to make sure that all the information is correct. So it's important to have a keen eye for biased and unbiased headlines, which means being aware of sensationalists. People love sensationalized stories. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> does it, you see, in our everyday mundane lives where we have to get up and do, do the hamster wheel thing, right? Of course we want to We hear, need something. Of course. Right? Regardless if it's true or false or whatever case is. A lot of people don't even have the time to go to the city, so you know I'm gonna really believe that it's true, you know, but still. So you rather live in a misinformed world or a disinformed world? Well, that's your life? Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, eventually somebody's going to get tired of it. Okay. Right? So I want to give you guys an example of a, um, a headline just so you can see how this happens. So an example of a sensationalized headline is racist groups savagely attack peaceful protesters. <laughs> very, very elaborate. What about adjectives? So, ah, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> So whenever you see a lot of adjectives and adverbs, those are used to persuade. It's a persuasive technique. Okay. Whenever you see adjectives, racist groups savagely attack peaceful lord. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They could have simply said, protest ends in violence. <laughs> Unbiased, right? We're not, we're not, it's a very straight to the point, but when you right. want to hype it, you're yeah. going to say more. Well, yeah, because, you know, that's what we teach our students. You want you go ahead and actually make something a lot more colorful. You gotta go ahead and add adverb, adjectives. And adverb. That's right. So, always check out both sides of a controversy. Um, have they been given a chance to speak? Sorry. Check out both sides of a disagreement, and see who's no con. Dave doesn't deal with no con, so I can't say controversy. But it, wouldn't controversy work good with this one? Rest of the deal with no con. Okay, right. so disagreement. <laughs> Are experts who give their opinions on a topic connected to any interest that make their opinions biased? Hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. When you see someone who's famous all of a sudden jumping on the bandwagon for someone else, what's the agenda? You mean like how Nike went in and back and calling Kaepernick and then their shoe sales went up like how much the next day? Do you think that was just a coincidence? These things are not coincidences, people. Right. That's why they're doing it. There is a reason for it, okay? Right. You know, I'm in the States right now, the whole ADOS, the American Descendants of Slavery. Okay. That's something that definitely people have to go really take a look at it right now as well. Okay. Right? I mean, who are they backed by? Who are they backed by? And that's the thing. We have to go ahead and ask that question. Who are they uh, really backed by? Right? Right now, is it a seed of soul dissension? Right? I don't we even have, know what the hell you just said. We have split parties. <laughs> Right, one to sit on this side where the reparations are for everybody, and now is it just for them? 
Okay. Right? So, I mean, you know, these are just simple little things. I mean, mind you, you know, it, it is current, right? And by means, of course, we are looking at everything overall. So, say it one more time so people can just look into that again. A-D-O-S, American Descendants of, of Slavery. Yes, there Slaves. You there you go. Okay. The last letter is C. Okay. And this is for credibility. Mm-hmm. All right? So, we have accuracy, mm-hmm. balance, and credibility. Mm-hmm. So, a story has to have credible experts. If not, then it's just, and I'm going to use Den's, Zendel's word, opinion news. Is that what he said? Right. Is that what he said? I don't know. But it was opinion news, right, guys? Something like that, right? Okay. So credible sources are experts in their topics and are usually well-known in their field. So in some countries, actually, around the world, journalists are restricted by their governments completely. Like, North America is truly the land of freedom in certain senses because we can't say just whatever we want. We can just put out information with no type of check no check to see if it's valid we just throw things out there so in the philippines there was a bill passed in 2017 to stop fake news so a person can actually be imprisoned up to five years if they are caught spreading news that causes any type of division chaos violence or hate so we do i wonder how that would work out here (laughs) <laughs> right? How many things we get shut down yeah. here? Yeah, who governs that, right? And so there are some other solutions to this now. There are some things that can help you. And again, it's always about taking that next step if you really want to get the truth behind the matter. So there are some tech solutions like fact checked. There's also ver- verification junkie, which I just heard about. Oh, that's the, um, yeah, thank you. So that's the, the bill. Th- the bill in the Philippines that says if you spread any type of discontention, you're, you're going to jail. Okay? Um, a lot of newspapers here in Toronto would shut down. Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, verification junkie, political fact, these will actually help you check some of your news sources. And if you ever get a picture, you know those viral pictures that, that come up and they're just so like outlandish. You can actually do a reverse search on Google to find out if the picture's even true. I think it's, you just put in um, reverse dot photos and you can put the photo in and reverse it to see if it comes from an actual legitimate source or if it's just strippiness. And the majority of the time, a lot of them are just strippiness, but it's a good way to check. So there's options, guys. You can check out your fake news. We've let you know Mm. how you can do that. So when we come back, we're going to figure I guess we'll figure out how some of this information spreads so quickly. We're going to talk about bots. Bots, guys. You know, AI is always, always cool. And um, Catalyst accounts. And something they called sock puppets, which I never knew about, but I learned about. So I'll tell you guys about sock puppet accounts when we get back on Here to Help You. See you guys. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So, Dave, what have you thought you know, so far? What do you think about some of this information? I like it. I like regards to what's being presented because, you know, these have been tools that white supremacists have used for, from day one in regards to um, how to go ahead and sow that seed of discontention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and once again, we don't deal with an account in this case. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I like the fact that we're able to go ahead and present this in a manner that is actual. It's well. always about being practical. Right. Um, we 
can see, of course, examples. Um, this is a great example here, this book right here by Tom Burrell. Brainwash. Yes. Please go it's ahead a good and book. pick it up. Excellent book. And we've got it showing how showing um, the actual ads, right? And what messages are they displaying, right? The stereotypes that we've fallen into and so on and so forth, right? Mm. Especially now, um, there's a picture. Remember King Kong? Like not like the original, original King Kong. Right. Anyways, there's a movie poster, right, of King Kong holding a white woman in his hand. Yeah. Right. And then Vogue puts out an issue, a cover photo of LeBron oh, James. Of LeBron James right, holding, holding a white woman, woman in that. Right. And she, of course, in King Kong, the girl was scared, but in this case, the woman's happy and nice. It's yeah. LeBron. It's Le exactly. Right. <laughs> so, what are the images being presented there? <laughs> right. No. No. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So I mean, you know, like, um, it, it just once again, it comes to being more aware, right? Having more discussions, having more dialogue, right? Because at the end of the day. Um, we're the ones who go ahead and the, the majority of us here on the outside as opposed to those who are working in the industry, right? And we're the ones that we get swayed, right? Well, so, we don't get swayed. Well, you know but what the I'm community gets swayed. You don't understand what I'm trying to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so, it. it. It is apparent that we, we, we need to be aware and, and more shows like this have to be accounted for. Well, good. Let's look at how some of this this, this information hmm. spreads. And at the end, actually, I have a really cool glass clip. Our brethren Denzel, he's big on this. Hmm. Um, we are going to actually end with that. And what he has to say is phenomenal. So definitely stay tuned for that. So so let's talk about how this information spreads through the internet. So first, there's an anonymous user who dumps out the information. Okay. okay? So that's it, the instant information you get. Then there are catalyst accounts. So they access this information and bring it to more mainstream sites like Twitter or Facebook uh, we're going to review all of that in a minute. We're going to go back to that in a second, okay? So eventually, a celebrity or someone with influence will share this information. Mm -hmm. Okay, eventually it starts to spread enough that it catches a wind, right. right? And then finally, the information reaches mainstream news, and then it's just spread all over. <laughs> so whether it's right or wrong, mm -hmm. it's out there. Yeah. Okay? It, it reminds me of um, Century Self. Right. I'm telling From you right now, yes. Century uh -huh. of Self is a, sh it's on YouTube, guys. Please, I beg you guys mm -hmm. to watch this. It is a four-part series, changed my life, changed how I look. Ever since then, media has made sense to me. And it's funny because that was made years ago, yet it explains what's happening right now. Yeah, it's very relevant. So relevant, it was made years ago, mm -hmm. right? And another person to check out, Edward Bernays, uh, he has a book called Propaganda. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you went to business school, you probably read it because they use that. If you're in public, if you're not, sorry, not public, but public relations, even though there's public no difference. Public relations too, right? yeah. They use that. It's a very good book. So catalyst accounts, let's talk about this. Catalyst accounts are a person or thing that starts an event and spreads it rapidly. So some examples are uh, or amplifiers. That's another thing they call it, catalysts mm -hmm. or amplifiers. Mm -hmm. So these are online accounts that are used to spread disinformation by sharing it widely on social media platforms. So there's two different examples that I found. Some are called bots, mm -hmm. and some are called uh, um, sock puppet accounts. Okay. So let's talk about bots first. So bots are automated accounts that are controlled by code that have been written by a human user. So right away, you got your bias, because it's human. Right. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they are set up for fun, like when people use it to get more followers on Instagram. Right. They use bots, mm. okay? And other times, they're set up for deceptive reasons. Mm. This is where it becomes a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. There's this thing called sock puppets, which I had no idea about. Yeah, that's new to me too. So they're created by someone to appear as if they were being controlled by another person. So I, I've heard of it before, but I never knew it was referred to as sock puppets. So how do you know if the information you're reading is from a bot account? Or maybe even a sock puppet. So first, check to see how often information has been posted. If the posts are continuous throughout the day and night with short breaks, the account is probably on. Because <laughs> nobody have no time for that. <laughs> no one's going to schedule them. Like, you can schedule them, but that's part, that's a bot too. Because it's a human user setting it exactly. up, right? So exactly. even that. Like, if they're coming regularly, probably not a person. It's probably a, a bot. If you see a Twitter account that is ex exclusively composed of retweets, you might also be dealing with something called a tweet bot, which I never knew about. Yeah, okay. that so, I heard of. Here are some last minute thoughts. I, I want to leave everyone with a, with a little bit of a wrap up with everything, and then we're going to come up with that Denzel video. So every time you open your browser, 
every time you go online, your browsing history, location data, purchasing patterns, and your personal information is logged. I want you to know this. Within seconds, that information is then combined with other information about you, including your past history online, and even your phone number and email address. The information is sold to digital advertising companies, which is why you will always see what you've been looking for pop up magically in your feed. So if a woman like me who love our shoes, this is why they're always going to show me shoe ads. This is, this is, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is how information, this is how advertisers get to you. Mm -hmm. It's because of this idea of spreading it. And the fact that whenever you go online, you leave a print. You must know that. Very, very important. Yes. Did you want to end with anything, Mr. Rankin? Cambridge Analytica. I hope I said that right. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. What about great, Cambridge Analytica? The great hack. That's exactly the great hack. Yeah, that's exactly what you're referring to right now. You saw, I just saw Grant's ears pick up when you said that guy. Plus, you know, um, from taking a few digital media marketing courses, they teach you how to go ahead and write the code for cookies. Meaning, you know, um, when you go to a website now, now mm -hmm. it's, it's legal where you have to present it on your website. Say, listen, you know what? You could either agree to the cookies. Yeah, you heard disable cookies. Or that's disable true. That's what cookies, that's for. Right? Okay. And that's, that's exactly what it's for, right? Okay. So they teach you how to go and write that code so that way when you actually pop away, right, the website's still following or something you clicked on before is still following, still tracking you were ever moving online, right? So oh. it's, it's, it's very interesting in regards to, of course, you know, how far um, from a legal standpoint, right, and it's not intrusive in, in their eyes, right? Hmm. So, guys, definitely leave your thoughts. Any, any other information you have about misinformation and disinformation, leave it in our comments below. Mm. Share this show. Very, very important. And I want to leave you guys with another great moment with the wonderful, um, outspoken Denzel Washington. We'll see you next week on Here to Help You. Peace and love. Peace and love, family. I've been on a buzz about this fake news. You were the subject of a fake news story. Oh, yeah, what'd they say? I was running for president. No, no, no I voted. You running, you no, what'd they say? You switched your support. I switched, uh, yeah, 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 Trump. yeah, yeah. What yeah. do you make of all the fake news that it affects If you, you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Hmm. Mm, uh, so what do you do? That's a great question. <laughs> what is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore. So what a responsibility you all have to be, to tell the truth, not just to be first, but to tell the truth. We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. Anything you practice, you'll get good at, Inclu including BS. You told me last night. <laughs> okay. But you heard me? Does that make sense?